I am about to share two time-saving pattern tools with you all that are gonna make it easier to work with vectors and recolor your patterns. Many artists have noticed that the current tools for vectorizing and recoloring drawings on your iPad are buggy and require many steps to use. The apps crash often and they take up storage on your iPad. This lack of simple tools makes working with vectors seem harder than it actually is. I know this because so many of you have messaged me or emailed me and told me I would like to work with vectors, but this keeps happening. So these tools are going to solve so many of those issues for you. The other problem is that artists want to recolor their artwork quickly, but very few apps, especially iPad apps, offer a simple and quick way to do it. Without paying for a subscription or watching embarrassing ads, it just isn't possible. In the past, we've kind of had to choose. Do you want to pay for a subscription and get all these nice features? Or do you want to be willing to watch embarrassing ads and then get the features? And then if someone walks by your iPad, you're like, it's just an app. It's just an ad. This is going to solve all of those problems. And I'm offering these to you all for free. I have created two widgets. One is a vectorizer and one is a recode colorer and both are browser based, meaning I don't save any of your files and they are both free to use. The vectorizer allows you to upload an image, adjust smoothness and download your vector in just a couple of clicks. The recolorer allows you to upload an SVG and enter words or color choices and then download your favorite versions. I'm giving these to you all for free because when people watch my pattern classes, these are often sticking points that they have in getting to the next stage. So I don't want people to struggle with my classes because they don't have the tools they need to make patterns. So these are going to fill those holes for you. By the way, I'm Liz Kohler Brown. I'm a surface designer and hand letterer, and I love helping people find their style and sell their work. If you like getting tutorials and things like this in your inbox, go ahead and click subscribe right now. It helps me create more videos and it helps more people like you find my videos. Today, we're going to talk about how to use both widgets, how to get the most out of them and avoid common issues and how to add the widgets to your home screen or app icons. So let's start with the vectorizer. It's a super simple process, many less clicks than the other apps that allow you to vectorize. First of all, you upload a black and white image. You ideally avoid textures or huge images. 3000 by 3000 pixels is really plenty, you guys. You adjust the smoothness and detail based on your personal style, and then you just click download and save it to your cloud storage. Optionally, you can give me some feedback under the widget if you had a really good or bad experience so I can continue to improve this tool. What I did is I went to the other apps that allow you to vectorize and I counted how many clicks it took from opening the app to getting your vector. And I found that my widget is about half the amount of clicks. And if you're like me and you do complex pattern collections, that could be you know, hundreds of clicks less every single time you work, which takes away from your creative energy. It's frustrating. And not to mention those apps are crashing a lot because they're just taking a lot of bandwidth on your iPad. So I'm starting out here in the photos app and you can get a black and white image into your photos app. However you like to do it, whatever design app you like to use, or like this one, maybe you do it on paper and you scan it in. You could use any app really. You just need to end up with this result that is a white background and a black foreground. So then we can head to the vectorizer tool and I've saved these two widgets down here. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. So I'm going to click on the vectorizer to open that up and then I'm going to scroll down to the vectorizer tool. So you'll see here, choose your file. So choose photo library and then tap on the file. And then you get to choose the detail mode. So how much detail do you want? Do you want it to have all the little nooks and crannies that were in the original hand painted version? Do you want it simplified a little bit? So you can kind of choose that here. I'm going to go with simple, fewer shapes, and then you can choose a smoothness level. Like if you like it rough and jagged, go all the way up. If you like it more smooth, go all the way down, or maybe just keep everything in the middle. You know, you can play with it because after you press, convert to SVG, you actually get to see the results. So you can play with these a little bit and see 
what smoothness level works for your personal style. So once everything looks good in that preview and you're like, yes, that is how I want my vector to look, you press download SVG. That's gonna give you a little pop-up here and I'm gonna press download, open in. I like to use Dropbox, but any cloud storage will work or you could also save it on your iPad then you use up more storage on your iPad. So personally, I like to do everything in Dropbox. Then I can easily purge folders that I don't need anymore. So Dropbox, I have a little folder called Vectors where I just drop vectors where I'm transitioning things back and forth for my patterns. So that's my Vectors folder. I'm gonna press Upload and there it is in Dropbox. So now we can head into Affinity or whatever vector-based app you like to work with, and we can press open, import document. This is my vectors folder, so here it is right at the top. And there's my vector. It's gonna have a transparent background, and just like with any vectorization app, all the parts are gonna be separate in the layers menu, so you will have to do a little bit of grouping. For example, in Affinity, I would just highlight all of those flower layers, and then maybe set that to a color, so I get a color I like. Let's add that one other piece and then add those together. So I would repeat that same process with all of my flower parts and then same thing with my leaf parts so that I have everything colored and separate and that just makes it really easy to color. Now, if you've never done this before, this would be the time to check out my free Affinity 101 course where I do share all the steps for playing with vectors like this so that in the end, what you have is two parts or however many parts you need based on your file and they're separated by color so they're really easy to recolor inside a pattern. So what you would end up with once you import any vectors that you need for a pattern would be a finished vector-based pattern and it only took those few little steps to turn your black and white image into a vector drawing and then you have this beautiful seamless vector to share on POD sites or with licensors. So now that you have a feel for how easy it is to vectorize your artwork with this tool, let's talk about the recolorer. This is another simple tool, but it has more features for you. So you upload a colored SVG and you can recolor either by entering words or by selecting colors and color relationships. You download an SVG, PNG, or JPEG of your favorites and put them into the app that you like to use. You could upload these straight to a POD company or you could save them in your favorite design app or you can turn them into vectors and manipulate the vectors again. I tried to build in a lot of options for you so that regardless of what pattern workflow you like to use, you can utilize this tool. So I wanna make a note here that the words version will give you six different interpretations of your prompt. So in this example, I typed pink and blue twilight and then I tweaked the brightness and saturation a little bit and I got almost six options that I like. A couple of these, I'm not crazy about the contrast, but for the most part, I love this result. Of course, you can also tweak the file after you export. So this isn't your final final, but maybe it just gets you to that place where you have a feel for what you want the color palette of your collection to be. So let's pick up where we left off with this pattern I showed you previously. So we've vectorized the black and white drawing. We've put it into this pattern format and we're ready to get some color versions. So I'm gonna press the hamburger menu export SVG and then rather than exporting the entire document I'm just going to export artboard one because I do my artboard one and then I have a preview over here I show how to do this in my pattern classes if you've never done it before it's super easy so I'm going to press Dropbox again saving it to that same kind of transition folder I have called vectors and upload that to the folder now let's head back to the home screen. I'm gonna click on my recoloring widget and scroll down here, choose that file by going to choose file, Dropbox, and then find my vectors folder. So here it is at the very top and I can just click that one time to import it into the recoloring tool. 
So then you'll see your image pop up here and that's when you can start playing with ways of recoloring it. So you can either type custom words in here based on things that you want to see or you could use some of these preset colors here. So I'm going to type midnight forest pink and blue. This is like the the more fluid one. You never know exactly what you're going to get. It can be a great surprise or not as great surprise, but what I find is if you do this a few times, you eventually will find something you like. So I like this combination, but what I wish we had is a little bit more kind of moodiness, darkness. So I'm going to bring the brightness down a little bit and maybe even bring the color contrast up a little and then recolor it. Oh, that might have been a little bit too much. Let's even bring the saturation down and the color contrast up a little. So just playing back and forth with that, sometimes you will find one you really like. I like that one. But then, you know, you don't have to stick with your first choice, of course, orange and pink sunset, something like that. So what I've done is preloaded thousands of words into here that will be interpreted by this machine and it will decide what do those words mean and how can we translate those into color. So sometimes you'll find a great result from this, sometimes you won't, and you maybe want to use the more predictable version below. But if you like one of these, go ahead and press save JPEG, PNG, or SVG based on what you want. If you just want to bring a JPEG into Procreate, for example, to save a palette, you just save it, press download, open in Procreate, and then we're sending that file over to our Procreate library. Or we could press SVG, download, open in, going back to Dropbox, saving that in our vectors folder, and then we'll be able to open that file in Affinity. So sometimes I'll do that if I just want to save that color version as a ready to roll pattern that I can just start playing with in Affinity. So I'll just press that import button and then it will be there in my Affinity gallery. So let's head back to the recoloring tool and do the second way of creating color versions, which is recolor by relationship. So this is where you choose a color. So you have to decide what your original color is going to be. And then you can optionally choose a base color, a second base color. So for example, I'm going to go with a kind of dark purple, and then I'll also choose this orange over here. So those are my two colors that I've chosen. You could deactivate that second one by clicking that little use button here. Then we choose a relationship. So I'm going to go with tetradic recolor pattern, and then, wow, that's way more saturated than I want. So I'm going to bump down the saturation and press recolor little more saturation. So this is where you can get really refined with how you want this to work. So that orange, I'm thinking, what if I change that to more of a pinkish color over here? Let's do that and then recolor the pattern. So I can make those little micro adjustments to the various elements of the color. And then when you're happy with it, you can download it as an SVG, PNG, or JPEG. And again, if you want to have the raster version, you can open that in something like Procreate or another app, and then maybe the SVG in something like Affinity or Canva. So I'm hoping this gives you a lot of different options. Then we have a feedback section under that, so I would really appreciate your feedback. If something goes wrong, if something goes right, I wanna know about it to hear about how you enjoy using these widgets. So I hope you're getting excited about using these tools. I'm going to share with you how to save these on your home screen so they're really easy to find right now. So if you're excited about using these tools, this is a good time to add them to your home screen. You can use the Shortcuts app to create app-like buttons for your home screen or icon bar, and I'll show you how to do that. So if you have never used the Shortcuts app, this is a good time to get to know it because that's how you can make yourself little shortcuts and easy 
buttons to get to places that you go often. So I'm just gonna swipe my finger down on the screen and type the word shortcut. That's going to show me the shortcuts app. It comes with your iPad, it's free, so you don't have to purchase it. Then we're gonna tap the plus symbol and over here on actions, we're going to type open URL. I like to do open URL in Chrome, but if you use a different browser, of course you can use that one, but I do use Chrome. So I'm gonna say open URL in Chrome, and then you will paste the URL that I will email you that is the URL to this widget. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the vectorizer as my example. I'm just going to paste the URL in there and then you can press the check symbol. Next, you'll tap this little drop down menu here and tap rename. I like to call the vectorizer vectorizer, but call it whatever you want, of course. I'm actually calling mine vectorizer demo because I already have one called vectorizer, so it's not letting me do that again. So vectorizer demo, I've got the URL in there, and then I'm going to press this share button over here and we want to add this to your home screen. So when you get to that place, you can tap image, choose photo. And so you're going to be able to, when I first email you this information, you're going to be able to get to this page, tap one time here and tap save image in photos. So you've got that vectorizer icon there in your photos app. So then all you have to do is press image, and tap choose photo here and then tap on the icon tap use and add so now when you go to your apps you might have to scroll over if you have a lot of apps you might have to scroll a few times but here it is vectorizer demo if you want to drag it over here to home you can do that or if you want to drag it down here to the bottom, you can do that. I'm going to delete it since I already have one, but that is the exact steps you would take to get both of these down here on your shortcuts bar. You'll find the link to get started with these widgets right below this video. I hope you love this tool. Please tell me in the comments what you think and tell me in the feedback form under the widgets how it goes for you. Whether you have a great result or whether something's confusing for you, I want to know because I will be continually updating and improving these widgets over time. So can't wait to hear what you think of them. If you enjoyed this video, you might also like my video called Make Sellable Graphics and another called Affinity Made Easy, where I'll take you through the whole process of working with Affinity Designer so you don't have to have any struggles when you start using this app.